So if you've been following the channel for a little while now, you'll know that we actually have AIS on board, but we only have an AIS receiver. We recently made a trip across to the Channel Islands, and on the way back, we realised that we really need to start transmitting our position. We came across some really large ships, and it was quite clear that those ships weren't using radar, they were completely relying on their AIS. And it was at that point I thought to myself, one of the next upgrades for us needs to be an AIS transponder. You also know that I'm a big fan of all the open source software and hardware. OpenMarine do have an AIS transponder. However, in the UK, it requires certification. I'm not comfortable with doing that just at the moment. So I did a bit of research on the internet and I came across a couple of manufacturers that make these products and the M-Track one seemed to come out the best. Let's have a look what's in the box. So the unit itself is relatively small. It's IPX6 and IPX7, so that means it's waterproof, dampproof, and weatherproof. On the back of it, you connect your antenna. It has a VHF radio output. You can connect an external GPS, however, the unit does feature an inbuilt GPS. On the front, there is a power and NMEA uh, output, and also an NMEA 2000 output. It features a bracket design on the back, so you can click it into place. Included in the box, is a USB cable to connect the device to your laptop or Mac so that you can configure it. And here's the USB port on the side of the device. It's well sealed. So this is a large cable that provides power to the device and also outputs NMEA 0183, as well as a silent switch so you can stop transmitting your position. Each cable is tinned, colour coded and labelled. There's two NMEA0183 outputs, one at the slower speed so you can drive things like VHF and the other one for a chart plotter. So this cable connects from the output here to your VHF radio. It features an inbuilt splitter which if the power is removed or the device fails, will automatically allow the VHF to still transmit. This is the bracket which can be screw mounted or stuck on with the provided 3M tape. And it simply clicks into place with a small bolt at the bottom that holds it. They also include a really handy template so that you can fix the bracket and then fix the unit to the bracket and a really clear step-by-step -step guide to get the unit up and running quickly. Okay, now that we've looked at what's in the box, let's get it set up. So the first thing that I needed to do was to remove the old Glomex splitter. So if you remember, I installed this a little while ago, and this is where my main VHF aerial comes into the system. This is now going to plug straight into the AIS unit. Once that was done, I connected the VHF cable from the AIS unit to the back of the VHF because I wanted to test it before I installed everything. I then powered up the unit and I got two lights. These lights here are just telling me that it's not set up. So next you need to program the device and this is in a package called Pro AIS. You can see here that my Mac has already detected the device and it's just simply plugging in the USB cable and pressing connect. The software works on Windows and Mac. We can now get some diagnostic information and we can see that the device is powering up and it's going through its checks, but it's not going to transmit anything until we've populated some information about the boat. One of the concerns I had is that the device wouldn't get a strong GPS signal. So before I mounted everything, I just wanted to make sure that it had got a good satellite fix before I fixed it to the bulkhead. And as you can see here, it's starting to get the information. So that's really good. It's also starting to receive AIS information from other boats, so this means that my setup and my aerial are all okay. So now it's time to populate ship's name, call sign, MMSI number, and the vessel type. This can be done offline, and you can just connect the device via a USB cable to your computer. I chose to do this when it was all connected up. You also need to tell the software where the unit is located on the boat. Once that's done, you get this huge warning because some of this data can't be changed and then you just need to leave it about 30 seconds and everything should go green. There are also some other options in the software so that you can output GPS information. I've decided to turn this on because I want to output GPS information over the NMEA0183 network to my VHF, and also I can use this as a backup GPS on the NMEA2000 network. 
Now that the setup was complete, it was time to finish the installation. So there's the AIS unit all installed underneath, um, and I've plugged an NMEA 2000 cable into that. You see that's just coming temporarily over the top here into this um, extension cable with the terminator at the end. So this is the end of my network. And then this, this, so this cable here, this one is the AIS. This cable here is going to the Raspberry Pi. That is just a blanking plug. There's nothing special about that. And then this cable here that's coming out, this blue one, is going all the way over there, out through the door and to the um, C-Talk to NMEA 2000 converter that's in the in the podium up at the top there. So the the Axiom is plugged into that at that end. And then here, as I say, we've got uh, the data coming in from the AIS. And that's now going into the Raspberry Pi through the enemy 2000 connector, through the MacArthur hat, into the Pi, and then onto the display here. And you can see all the boats around us. And we've got a couple of things that aren't working just at the moment because I've changed a few things. So I just need to um, just need to sort those little bits out because I'm just actually got two data types coming in at the moment so there's a few things that are erroring which is to be expected but everything else is working as expected um, and you can see boats here passing with just bits and bobs of information so that's all working really nicely and it's the same story on the Axiom here you can see it showing up on the network with the Axiom being a newer device, there's obviously a lot more features that it's got in terms of AIS. It can do things like collision avoidance. So we're going to have a look at that over the next couple of journeys when we go sailing and see how that works. Here are some of the menu options. Well, I hope that's been useful. It really was a simple device to install. The bracket can either be screwed or stuck to the bulkhead, so that makes installation really quick. And essentially, I just needed to program it, provide it with power, and connect it to the NME A2000 network, and everything just worked straight away. Really impressed with this device. It's been really good so far.